Hi there. This presentation is on research we've done to try and identify a more effective defomer for organic maple production. So we all know that during the production of maple syrup, the development of foam and the need to control that foam at some point is going to be unavoidable. However, when we're using defoaming agents in the syrup making process, we need to always keep in mind what we're making. And the definition of maple syrup is that it is a 100% pure product, nothing removed or added except water. And so when we're adding defoaming agents, we need to keep this in mind and use as little defoamer as possible to make sure that we are maintaining the integrity of that purity, that ingredient statement of 100% pure. And with our conventional defoamers, so defoamers for conventional maple production, this is really pretty easy to achieve. Products like Atmos 300K, uh, kosher defoamer, these are engineered defoaming agents that work extremely well to control foam in minute, minute quantities. However, when it comes to organic maple production, um, it's not the same story. Primarily what we're using for defoaming in organic production are culinary or cooking oils that are certified organic and um, are okay to use with high heat levels. So things like canola oil, safflower oil, and sunflower oil. And because they are cooking oils, they are not products that are engineered to control foam. They are relatively ineffective relative to something that's actually engineered to do that job. And that lack of efficacy has uh, several consequences, which we all, any of you organic producers out there are probably well familiar with. So one thing that this lack of effectiveness results in is a relatively high occurrence of adverse events, basically foam overflows and the resulting loss of product, scorching of pans, scorching of people. Um, so this is not only a safety issue, but it also results in fairly substantial product losses, not to mention lack of efficiency and things like that. And the other result of their lack of effectiveness is that of course, we need to use much larger quantities of these uh, defoamers or these oils to try and control the foam that we have. And that um, need to use larger quantities of these oils results in a much higher occurrence of defomer off flavor and textures um, than we would have with using standard conventional defomers. And that of course results um, in a real reduction in the quality of syrup that we're producing, as well as of course the loss of value when we're producing more syrup with this defomer off flavor. And all of this is happening in the context of a fairly large and still growing market demand for organic syrup. So to enable us to meet that market demand with syrup that is of high quality without off flavors, it's really clear that there is a big need for a more effective organic defomer than the current culinary oils that we are using. So um, this challenge is not a new one. Um, research done by Dr. Natalie Martin at Center Acer began to study and look for a more effective organic defomer um, several years ago. And through numerous experiments in pilot evaporators and lab experiments and some producer field trials, unfortunately, they were unable to, fi to find any organic defomer or method that was clearly superior to the cooking, cooking oils that we were already using. However, the results of that work did clearly demonstrate that um, things like processing practices and evaporator settings and care and dispensing of defomer can have major impacts on how effective these relatively ineffective organic defomers are. And so I'll come back to this uh, later on in the presentation. And if you want to check out any of the results of those studies, check out Center ACER's website. So, our objective here was to sort of uh, pick up and continue that work to try and find a more effective defomer for organic maple production, something that was more effective at controlling and preventing foam than the cooking oils that we're currently using, and also something that doesn't uh, present a lot of off flavor or any off flavors when used in the quantities we need to use them in to successfully control foam. 
So the first step in this work was to conduct some laboratory experiments to basically screen every possible commercial um, organic defomer that was available at that time, as well as um, other mechanical methods and sort of anything that we can think of or was suggested to us to screen them in laboratory level experiments using 35 bricks concentrate um, to see which of these potential new um, commercially available organic defomers were uh, more effective than the standard control culinary oils that we're currently using. And we also compared their efficacy to sort of the gold standard of an effective defomer, which was Atmos. And in these experiments, which of course were just done in beakers, so only gave us a limited amount of information, of all the things that we tried, there was only one um, agent, one organic defomer commercially available that had performance at controlling foam that was significantly better than the current organic defomer control sunflower oil is what we used in these experiments. So you can see here in these images um, that, and these are basically taken at the same time during the processing, um, this candidate defomer, this trans 580 uh, controlled foam significantly better in all the trials that we did with it, significantly better than the sunflower oil. And it actually performed fairly similarly to the Atmos, at least in these beaker level experiments. So that was pretty encouraging. And for that reason, it was the um, candidate defomer that we chose to use in all of our subsequent um, larger experiments. So the next phase of this research was to conduct pilot tests um, in actual maple operations. So these are operations that volunteered to use the candidate defomer throughout the duration of the 2019 season. Two of the operations, we have four total that volunteered for this. Two of them uh, for their method of defoming dispensing used automated, automated peristaltic pump type defomers, uh, defomer dispensers um, like this one here. So these devices add a specified quantity of defomer at regular intervals through a, a probe that's inserted into the back band or, or the front band. Um, and in addition to adding defomer at a regular interval that you specify, they also have a feature where when foam reaches a level where it rises to a level where it touches the probe, it will begin an emergency addition of defomer until the foam level decreases. Um, so it kind of has both a preventative method mechanism and also the emergency control mechanism. The other two operations in our pilot test use the stand, more standard um, dripper style defomer dispensers. So all of these operations completed surveys pre and post season to give us an idea of their assessment of the effectiveness of the new defomer, um, their experiences with the flavor that they, of uh, the syrup they were making, and just their general experiences with using the candidate defomer. And they also submitted samples to us of their syrup for sensory evaluation. And pilot testing does give us a lot of information, but if we want to know and really truly answer the question, does this candidate defomer perform better than the current organic defomers that we're using, these culinary oils, in order to do that, we really need to conduct controlled experiments in real commercial maple equipment. So we did set up one of these experiments and conduct it. And again, the main questions that we are trying to answer here um, are twofold. One, is this candidate defomer more effective than our current standard organic oils? Are we using less? Is there less foam development? And also very importantly, does it result in syrup with a similar or lower occurrence of defomer off flavor? So the basic setup and methods that we use for this experiment are very straightforward. We produce syrup simultaneously with the same source of concentrate. In this case, we're using 22% concentrate to really guarantee that we produce some foam in identical evaporators. Um, everything about these evaporators is the same, except that one is equipped with um, canola oil as its defomer, and the other is equipped with the candidate defomer, this Trans 0580. So 
So all of the settings are identical between the two, uh, two evaporators. Everything is the same except uh, the deformer that we're using for each of them. And we repeated this trial or this experiment in four different trials throughout the 2019 production season. And so each time we'd run the experiment, we would get our 22% concentrate, flood the evaporators, and then start them simultaneously and allow them to run and continue to process until all of the concentrate was used up. And so for uh, the actual defomer in this study, in the back pans, we had them equipped with automatic defomer dispensers. And these are great tools in general, but they're also very good tools to use in research because they add a known quantity, a measurable quantity of defomer at regular intervals. So it's very easy to control how much defomer we're adding in the two different treatment evaporators. And so we would start the evaporators uh, with these automatic defomers at the same settings in the two, two different evaporators and then back them off or increase them as needed as foam was more controlled or less controlled. In the front pans, we used manual addition of defomer, which is not quite as uh, uh, scientifically easy uh, as using automatic dispensers. Um, so what we did was we set them up so that we would manually add a standard equal number of drops when the foam reached a certain marked height in either evaporator. So we did this to make sure that even though we didn't have a fancy machine to do the uh, deformer addition, we were still adding it in exactly the same way with the two different deformers and the two different evaporators. So for both the front and the back pans, we would weigh the deformer before and after the experiment. So each time we knew exactly how much deformer went into each evaporator. And then, of course, the other big part of the study is that we are collecting the syrup from each evaporator separately, filtering it separately, and then reserving that for later sensory ex experiments so that we can see, is there any impact on flavor of this candidate defomer? And so before we get into the quantitative results, um, some of the most important and really informative results that we had occurred as basic observations, um, which is in some cases kind of unusual for an experiment, uh, but these are really telling. So the first of these is that on the first day, so when we're sweetening the pans, in the evaporator that was using canola oil as its defomer, when the boiling point was first reached, that evaporator experienced a complete overflow of foam. And I mean complete overflow of foam. And because of that, of course, the automatic dispenser did its job and began its emergency addition of the canola oil. The problem was the canola oil was so ineffective at controlling the foam, the foam never knocked itself down lower than the probe. So the emergency addition of defomer just kept going and going and going until we shut the evaporator off. So it really was totally ineffective, this emergency addition. Meanwhile, in the other evaporator that was uh, running with the candidate defomer, there were no issues um, at startup. It reached the boiling point and overcame that with no issues, no foam overflow, nothing. And for the remainder of the experiment, we actually had to start the evaporator with the canola oil on low and kind of gently um, get it to and past the boiling point so that we could avoid that foam overflow. We did not have to do that with the evaporator running the candidate uh, defomer. Also in general, in the back pans, again, we're using these automated dispensers and we started them with the same settings, of course, and then we would reduce the rate that it was being added in both evaporators at the same time as foam was controlled and then increase it when it was not controlled. Overall, eventually we uh, were able to reduce the rate that the candidate deformer was being added to a much lower rate than we were able to reduce the canola um, deformer dispenser. So essentially, we were able to control foam with the settings uh, much lower with the candidate evaporator than with the canola oil evaporator. So we found that um, in particular in the back pans, the uh, candidate defomer was very effective at controlling foam. And I tried to give uh, some kind of indication of this with these pictures. 
as I'm sure you all know, it's very difficult to take pictures inside an evaporator to begin with. And it's also kind of difficult to take pictures of foam, but I did my best here. So this is just a general representation of the general foam levels that we were seeing in the back pan of the evaporator using canola oil versus the general level of foam we were seeing in the back pans of the, canola, of the evaporator using the candidate depomer. So big, big difference in the amount of foam in the back pan. And that's just another shot showing uh, the actual sap inlet in the um, evaporator using the candidate defomer. So really, really low levels of foam. In the front fans in general, again, we were starting with the same number of drops, uh, the same standard number of drops for both treatments. But what we found over time is that we needed about half the amount of the candidate defomer as we did the canola oil to control the same amount of foam. So less of the candidate defomer knocked the foam down than did the canola oil. So now we can look at some actual, oh, sorry, here are some pictures of the front pans, just some example levels of foam. Now, uh, this is in the front pan of the canola evaporator, simultaneously the front pan of the candidate defomer evaporator. So this is not to say that there was never foaming in the front pans of the candidate defomer evaporator, but that generally the foam in the canola oil evaporator was more than that of the candidate defomer evaporator. All right, now some numbers. So this figure shows the actual quantity of defomer used during each experiment trial. So the total amount for the back and front pans um, weighed in grams and the control um, canola oils in blue and the candidate defomer amount is in green. So obviously on that first experiment trial where we had that emergency addition of canola oil that never stopped, of course we had much more um, canola oil added that day than we did the, the candidate defomer. However, that pattern continued. We were always using less of the candidate defomer than we were the canola oil. And on average, uh, we were using 45% the amount of candidate defomer as we were the control. So less than half the amount of candidate defomer was required. So this definitely shows, it uh, gives an indication that it's meeting one of the needs that we were after, where it is more effective at controlling foam with lower usage quantities. However, even if it's more effective and with lower amounts used, if it is doing something bizarre to flavor, say making syrup taste like dirt or strawberries, then it could be as effective as anything, but it would be useless to us. So it's really important to take the next step and look at the flavor of the syrup that we're producing to make sure that this candidate defomer is not adding any increased level of off flavor. And so we did this flavor evaluation in two ways. We conducted a standard sensory evaluation experiment, and then we also had the syrups classified by Acer division inspection. And so for the sensory evaluation experiment, we had 40 panelists that were trained to identify organic defomer off flavor and texture. These were primarily people that work in QA and QC at the major packers. This is what they do for a living. And then as you recall, we have four pairs of syrup produced uh, with the same concentrate simultaneously with the control and candidate defomers. Each one of those was assigned a random three digit code and put in opaque bottles so that color was not uh, something that influencing the results. And then they were presented to panelists in a balanced randomized order. So what that means is that each panelist got the pairs in a different order and the syrup within the pairs in a different order. So no one was tasting anything in the same order and that helps reduce kind of carryover effects. And so for each syrup, the panelists were asked two questions. First, does this syrup have defomer off flavor or texture, yes or no? And second, if it's present, what is the intensity level? And um, this was on a scale from none to very strong. And so the question we're trying to answer is basically, is there a difference in the frequency of defomer off flavor in pairs of syrup produced simultaneously with the control and candidate defomers using the same concentrate and with all other conditions equal? So here are some of the results. So this is uh, the frequency 
of yes responses to the first question, does the syrup have defomer off flavor? And the results show us that there was no significant difference in the frequency of yes responses. So the amount of yeses were equal between syrup produced with canola oil and the candidate defomer for the first three experiment trials. And then for the fourth trial, there were significantly fewer yes responses for syrup produced with a candidate defomer. So what this tells us broadly is that defomer off flavor is definitely not more frequent in syrup produced with the candidate defomer, and it was less frequent in at least one of the trials. So this is encouraging, so um, giving us an indication that this uh, candidate defomer is passing the basic threshold that we need of it not producing any more frequent off flavors than what we're currently using. However, one uh, sort of aspect of this figure that may give you pause is the relatively high frequency of yes responses um, to the question, does the syrup have defomer off flavor? So if you look at the pair that was produced in that first experiment trial, more than 60% of the panelists said yes to that question for both of the syrup pairs, the canola oil syrup and the candidate defomer syrup. That is a lot of yeses. And while that could simply indicate that there is a lot of defomer off flavor in general with both of these types of defomers, more than likely this is actually caused by a flaw in the design that we used to, of the sensory experiment. So the first flaw in that design is by asking question two. The question two was, if it's present, what is the intensity level of defomer off flavor? And um, this is a well-known um, phenomenon in sensory science is that basically human beings really don't like to be wrong. They really like to get things right. And so by asking what the intensity level of deformer off flavor was, it gave them the opportunity for the first question to say, well, I'm, if I'm not sure it's there, I can say yes and then indicate that it's present at a very low amount. And that's basically what we saw. So here's an example. These are the frequency of responses for um, the question, uh, for the question, what is the intensity level of deformer off flavor for that first pair of samples? So the one where we have more than 60% yes responses for both types. So you can see that the majority of the responses here we're in those very low trace, not sure, slight, faint, and mild. So it is quite possible that this is one of the reasons why there was such a large number of yes responses to the first question, because they could kind of give them uh, be right uh, be right in both ways by saying yes, but it's just there faintly. Um, so it probably a human response, and the second flaw in this overall design is also a well-known um, uh, phenomenon in sensory science, and that is response bias. So basically by asking the question, is there defomer off flavor present, it puts an idea in the panelist's mind that defomer off flavor should be present, and it predisposes them to say yes. So those are two possible reasons why there was such a high level of yes responses to the first question. But in general, the results of the sensory experiment are still useful to us because even if there is a high level and it's a false high level, the important part is, is that the candidate defomer syrup did not have more frequent occurrence of off flavor than the canola oil syrup did. In fact, it had less on at least one occasion. So, but for this reason, um, it was a very good thing that we also chose to look at the flavor in a different way, and that was by submitting them for sensory evaluation by the inspectors at ACER Division Inspection. So these are the trained inspectors that grade and classify all of the bulk syrup produced in Quebec. So this is what they do for a living uh, using very standardized classification procedures. And so we submitted them to three different inspectors who tasted them, evaluated them blindly, 
And in general, if the syrup had no off flavor at all, it's given an okay. If there's a slight indication of something, a little bit of some kind of defect, it's given a check. And then um, if there was the foamer off flavor at a significant level, it would have received a rating of VR4. And so what we can see from the results of the three individual inspectors, as well as the consensus of the three, they rated most of the samples as just okay, so no defect at all. For the samples that were given an indication of some slight defect of flavor, they indicated the nature of that defect. And what we see is that the defects they're indicating are things like caramelized or lightly wood, which is equivalent to metabolism. And so in no case was there any indication um, on the uh, syrups that were evaluated as having a slight defect, no indication that that defect was related to the foamer. And of course, none of the samples received a VR4 rating. So through this method, this also supports the results of our sensory evaluation experiment. In, through this inspection and this classification process, none of the samples had any indication, even a slight one, of defomer off flavor. So that supports the idea that the candidate defomer definitely doesn't increase the occurrence of defomer off flavor relative to the standard canola oil or other organic oils that we're using. And now also to bring back to the pilot testing results uh, that gives us an additional layer of information, three of the four producers said that they would choose to use the candidate defomer the following season. They, they liked it. And one in particular, which I know very well because it's the Proctor Center, <laughs> uh, the Proctor Center uh, operation, um, the, we found that the candidate defomer was extremely effective for the two operations with the automatic dispensers. And in the case of the Proctor Center, which was one of those, before they started using the candidate defomer, each time they started up, they would experience that foam overflow from the back pan as soon as the boiling point was achieved. And no matter how much um, canola oil, or it was safflower oil they were using before that, no matter how much they used or what they did, they could not stop this from happening. When they switched to the T580, this overflow stopped completely. And for that reason uh, alone, it was enough for the Proctor Center operation to say, yes, um, you would have to pry it from my cold, dead hands, I believe was the phrase that they used. So that was uh, informative. Also informative is that the two operations with the dripper style dispensers did have some challenges. Now, because the viscosity and the properties of the candidate defomer are a little bit different, it was very difficult for them to control the rate of addition by the dripper at the rate that they wanted. It was either too fast or too slow. And it was bad enough that one of the pilot test producers uh, just could not make it work for them. And they decided to um, abandon the pilot testing um, after the first couple of boils of the season because they just couldn't control it well enough. Um, so this is something to be mindful of in the future. Um, this is a, a more effective defomer, but the dispensing method may, uh, present, may present some challenges. So in conclusion, we found that this candidate defomer was certainly more effective at controlling foam with lower quantities used than the control organic canola oil. And in addition, we found that it had no negative impacts on flavor. The defomer off flavor was equally or less frequent than our syrup produced with the organic canola oil. And likewise, we had no VR4, no defomer off flavor at any level from slight to significant in standard classification. So essentially this uh, candidate defomer does meet the criteria that we were out to find um, in the beginning. There are a couple of caveats here. The candidate defomer naturally as it is an engineered product, it does have, it is, um, a higher price, but at the same time, we're using less than half the amount of it. So there is some sort of balancing there in total value. And if you also add the value of lower frustration at controlling foam, the value may become even greater for you. It is currently only certified organic in the US. 
Um, the Canadian organic certification process is currently ongoing. And then in a more broad conclusion, so as far as finding an organic defomer that works as well as something like Atmos with the same low quantities and low hassle and with no off flavors, right now that organic defomer is still a magical creature that exists only in fairy tales. Um, even though we're using less of this candidate defomer and it's working better, we're still using much higher amounts of that to control foam than we would be with something like Atmos. So it really isn't um, anywhere equivalent to what we're able to achieve with um, our conventional defomers. So what this means is that best practices for foam management and defomer use remain the best starting place to optimize foam control in organic maple production, because even with this new defomer, we're still working with something that is less effective and not the best tool for the job. Probably, probably where we are at in the industry now, the demand for organic syrup, the market is so big and the need for high quality organic syrup is so important. It is probably time for a manufacturer to start working with the manufacturer of something like Atmos to develop an organic formula of that product. Um, there's a significant enough need for it to happen and certainly it is uh, worth the higher price that producers would ultimately have to pay for that for something that worked as well as the conventional product uh, Atmos or, or one of those uh, conventional defomers these days. So hopefully that's something that someone in the industry um, uh, takes to heart and starts to work on. In the meantime, uh, the best starting place, as I mentioned, is for organic producers is best practice for defomer use care and dispensing. So this begins with sort of the care and feeding of defomer. So particularly for organic defomers, which are, you know, our standard organic defomers are culinary oils. And even this candidate defomer is based on canola oil. So they are extremely sensitive to degradation um, uh, with temperature, oxygen exposure, and time. They can become rancid, or even if, even if they don't go all the way rancid, they still develop other flavors. So it's really important to do things like uh, not reuse the same defomer from year to year. Um, also store it in uh, a relatively reasonable room temperature, not too hot, not too cold, uh, to keep it airtight if possible. And then all of our um, dispensers for defomer basically sit next to the hot evaporator the entire time that we're boiling. And so as they sit there, they, the heat and air is having its effect and it's developing flavors and potentially rancidity even just as it sits on the side of our evaporator. So it's best practices to use fresh defomer every time you boil, even though it's kind of a pain in the butt. And second is the method uh, of dispensing. So not just how, but also where and when. I can say that most methods of dispensing defomer in maple production don't allow adequate control of how much we're putting in, and all of them will enable more defomer than is needed to be added if we don't take good care. Um, things like drippers, we know that if you just kind of forget about them, they can just start to go with a kind of a mind of their own. With cups, um, they work great when they're working well. So if you have a, an effective defomer in them, uh, the foam rises to the level of that cup and it just gets knocked right back down. But with an ineffective defomer, like a standard organic um, defomer, oftentimes you'll have a foam overflow over top the cup and then every bit of defomer that's in that cup is now in your pants. And even as we saw in this experiment, even the very awesome automatic dispensers still will add way more of your defomer if, some, if uh, they're not taken care of or if you have an emergency snafu like we did in our experiment. And so it's really care, really important to be very mindful, whatever method you're using, um, be mindful of how much it is adding. The automatic dispensers are an extremely effective tool with organic defomer they um, can significantly reduce the amount of organic defomer that you're using 
above uh, drips or uh, drippers or cups. Um, so in general, I would recommend them for just about any organic maple operation. They will, if you use them correctly, significantly reduce the amount of defoamer that you're using. And then just a brief note that anytime, the closer that we add defoamer to the draw, the more likely syrup is to have defoamer off flavor. So if at all possible, adding defoamer close to the draw should be avoided. And then the sort of baseline foundation uh, of defoamer best practices is actually how we set up and manage our evaporator. So one of the primary causes of foam development is the amount of heat. The more heat that's under our pans, the more foam is going to develop. In addition to that, the more heat we have under our pans, the more and harder nitre will develop. And the more nitre that develops, the more foam we have. So both of these items are factors to manage to help minimize foam development. So ideally, particularly for an organic maple operation that is using a defoamer that doesn't work quite as well, it is ideal to set up your evaporator for the lowest amount of heat that you can tolerate for the processing level that you desire. And in many cases, this is kind of like backwards to or against what most producers are or many producers are wanting. They're wanting to process as fast as possible and get done. However, and slowing things down is slowing things down and it's kind of against their goals. But if you take a bigger picture, look at things, sometimes by reducing the amount of heat that we're using, by because that facilitates foam that is easier to control, niter that is easier to manage, it's softer, you have to break down and clean less times. Sometimes a small reduction in the heat that we're using, while it creates a small reduction in the processing rate, it creates an overall increase in time efficiency, even though your gallons of syrup per hour might go down slightly, you will be spending less time in the sugar house overall. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. And then also that goes into that is sap quality. So the lower quality sap you have, um, you are going to have more issues with foam. This is something that we all know, but it's something to be particularly mindful of when using organic defoamers, because if you have uh, sap that looks like this coming into your evaporator, you are going to have challenges with foam. And when you're using an organic defoamer that really has low efficacy, you may have challenges when things are, when sap quality is getting pretty nasty, you may have challenges keeping that foam controlled no matter how much of that organic defoamer you use. And I'm sure that many of you have had this experience. So the beginning of the season, when sap kind of sits around for a while until you get enough to boil, obviously at the end of the season, these can be times where um, you may want to think about other ways to help minimize your foam um, because your organic defoamer is really not up to that task. And this may be a time to temporarily reduce the heat or um, use some other practices that may help you control your foam better. And so that's it for this presentation. If you are interested in learning more and diving deeper into these results, you can Check out the uh, technical article we wrote on this. It's available at mapleresearch.org. And I would like to say giant thank yous to everyone that helped with these projects, um, including especially Natalie Martin and Center Acer for their very generous help uh, through many aspects of this project, project. The whole PMRC team, especially Brendan Haynes, who was my partner in crime during our syrup production experiments. Eric Sorkin and the Runamuck team who provided the concentrate for this study, the very, very brave pilot test producers who probably won't pick up the phone when I call again, and of course, all of the sensory panelists in, and their employee, employers who very generously donated their time and facilities for those sensory experiments, and also Steve Savastano, who um, is, uh, works for the company that makes uh, this Canada defoamer who provided a lot of technical information to help us uh, make our experiment the best possible. So with that,
Well, thank you very much. And if you have any questions about this research, feel free to email me. Thanks.